So hi everyone, uh, this is Michelle Hoskin and this is the, uh, the next WOW Hour and I am very, very happy to have my friend and business, I suppose, contact, partner, professional connection, whatever you want to call you, um, Stephen Oliver, Steve Oliver from The Royal Company. Um, I have known Steve for probably as long as I've been doing, well, I think as long as I've been in financial services, so I think I met you through... Well, it must have been David Batchelor, and it must have been at least 10 years ago. Reckon? I think the LIA, and it was 15 years ago. Because you came to an LIA talk, and that was when we met up at some pub somewhere in between where you are and where <laughs> Which is what you normally do. I thought, well, this is, this is the lady with the, with the full-on charge. I'm not sure which direction <laughs> going Let's in plug yet. In. Let's plug in and take some of that. Um, I've, I've had the privilege, obviously, of working with you. Um, and I suppose, I suppose we've known a lot about what we've both been doing, but I suppose because of the business that you've got, which I want you to talk a bit about, um, there's never really been kind of any direct reason for us to work together, other than, obviously, you do my wills, um, and very good as well. And also, I spoke at your recent conference. So, I want, so first of all, just, just tell, tell everybody a bit about the will company and what, what you do, and I suppose most importantly, why you set it up. Tell me a bit about that. Okay, yeah, because it is quite a big story, but I'll try and keep it a bit short. We've only got like 45 minutes. <laughs> yes, I know. And I started as a financial advisor and couldn't find decent will drafting companies. So that, that was the right? first. Yeah, that was the first trigger point. Mm -hmm. And secondly, it was having a client that was pretty poorly treated who had lost her husband and went to the solicitor with the will that was sorted out. And she was very poorly treated, overcharged, took a long time. And I just got a bee in my bonnet, probably a bit like you. I got a bit dynamic in terms of thinking, I'm not happy that how people are being treated. And I think I've got a story to tell that will make a difference. And I think I can make a difference. So that was how that was the catalyst. And I just ended up enjoying the will writing business more than financial services. So I stepped out of financial services to run it. So you so did was, it just as you so just, just uh, that was just you. You decided to rather than being an advisor and I fair, you went specialised in the will, the will business. Yeah, initially I had my feet in both camps. So yeah. I wanted to continue to be a financial advisor, and this is going back to 1994. Um, and I wanted to run a will drafting service for my clients that was fair to them. Um, but gradually, I realised I enjoyed it a lot more. And as the will company grew, I got less and less focused let's say on the financial services side of things and by 2004 I'd stepped out of financial services right. 10 years later because I had another business the will company that was that was thriving and I really enjoyed and I felt like I was making a difference yeah. and I was working with financial advisors so 30,000 wills later I think we made a difference it's interesting like I, like obviously because of the business that I'm in it was always it was quite hard I mean I've said this to you before but it was really hard for me to find one a financial advisor and for me even doing the stuff that I do it was almost like they came together will writing came together with 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 advice right so but but for most advisors they don't do it wills do they well why, why do you think that is and is that a good thing or bad thing good for you I guess but is that a good or bad thing um, yes, good for me, of course, but uh, I think it's a bad thing that advisors are not involved, partly because that just means then their clients could possibly go out to another professional and, like me at the beginning, get mistreated, as it yeah. were. Um, but also because the opportunities and the discussions you have with clients when you're talking about wills are much more in-depth, they're much more personal, you really are connecting with that client when you get involved in the wills. And oh, I yeah. use the Covey habit of uh, begin with the end in mind. Yeah. So it's a, bit, it's a bit macabre, but I tell them to, to tell their clients if they died yesterday, what would they be sitting around that table yeah. telling the rest of the family? And the reason that is so powerful is because it then gets them to focus on everything. Life insurance, inheritance tax, yeah, saving. Totally. The trusts, who they're living, everything to, and it just opens the whole raft of business that they otherwise may not have um, yeah. easily had access to. So, well, it so was that's probably the best reason. Well, it was it was interesting when I did mine. I mean, I found it massively emotional. I mean, I mean, what I, I probably had mine done a couple of years ago. And yes, granted, I was in this transition of you know Martin and I were separating, and there was Ruby to think about. But oh my God, just thinking about who would look after Ruby in the event that. 
you know, anything happened to me and then Nan Martin and oh my God. I mean, even now we sort of talk about, and it's amazing. I'll be honest with you, Steve, like, but it seems to be a really odd conversation. Like I talk about the fact that I'm insured and that what I do and I've got my wheels done. And I ask the mums around the school, not quite in the school playground, but when we go for glasses of wine and I would, I could count on out of 10 mums, two of them have got wills and their husbands earn good money and they've got children and, you know, and it, I'm like, really, really? Like, they're like, well, yeah, well, we, we sort of don't think we need one. Like, what, what would you say to anybody that's not a financial advisor watching this? Because this goes out and we never know, you know, you never know where these things end up. What would you say why a will is important? Well, one of the main reasons I think is that I consider it selfish not to make one. Because when you've gone, those left behind have got to resolve it all. So the more that's resolved before you go, the easier it is for them. But the biggest reason, of course, is money going in the right direction at the right time um, and, and efficiently uh, and without too much tax. So yeah. it's just a sending to be in preparation. You wouldn't, um, you wouldn't be driving in, uh, in your car without insurance, would you? No. So no. why would you it to other people to resolve after the event and leave you know, a mess behind? Why would you? it's, it's yeah. not something you do for people you love is it no and talking of which when i spoke at your conference um one of the other speakers was a lady called zalika sutherland who for those of you that are watching it through on playback zalika also did one of my wow hours um i can't remember which month it was but we can put the link in the show notes but zalika does she it, I, I, she's actually done mine but i don't know the technical term is it a farewell plan it is, yeah. It's, it's the idea of saying, well, this is what I would want to have happen at my wake or, or yeah. uh, a presentation or a eulogy or whatever it may be that's personal to that, to that particular person who just passed away. And my, my mother, for instance, she's 85. She's in her last years. And we, we talked a lot about what she would want to have. And you know, she's a big Neil Diamond fan. And she wants, oh, wow, she yeah. To, is, She's a big Matt Monroe fan, and uh, because she met my dad when he was, he used to be a singer in a club singing Matt Monroe songs. Oh, wow. and all, of, all that personal stuff yeah. that people don't formally prepare, don't they? And and at the annual conference, we had a variety of people, Zalika being one of them, yeah. um, that brought that more into focus and more attainable and more acceptable and perhaps uh, easier to talk about without feeling uncomfortable about it. I mean, my, I've, I've done mine. Mine's hilarious. I'm having a Mad Hatter's tea pot. I don't want any black. All, all the, the colour black is banned at my funeral okay. and at my party. I'm having a Mad Hatter's tea party. Everyone's got to wear crazy hats and just be bright. And I'm in a purple coffin in my red Chevy truck. Um, but I'll tell you what, picking the, the pool bearers, I was like an emotional wreck on the sofa. I was like, oh my God, all these people are going to carry my coffin, which will only be like this long. One, Mark could probably hold it up with one arm, to be fair. But, um, but yeah, so obviously Zalika is obviously linking up with advisors, will writers, funeral directors. But anyone that hasn't had the chance to watch that Wow Hour with Zalika, I highly recommend that you do that. Because you like Zalika, don't you? Oh, I think she's she's top notch, and I think yeah. she's got a pretty unique idea and, and position in the market, which is why I wanted her to speak at the conference, is to yeah. bring it back to bring it back to something quite nice. Because yeah. I wouldn't have known that you would have wanted a Mad Hat as a tea party unless yeah. you had told me. So, <laughs> and, I, and actually, that quite suits. Um, you know, yeah. and I can. I'll, yeah, I'm looking forward to it in 50 years. <laughs> time, so. yeah. The thing was, I was reading it, going, "This sounds great," and I was like, "Oh shit." I actually have to die before anyone has this party. It's like, yeah. oh, this is not good. This is not good. So tell, tell me about your annual conference, because I know you're really keen to build it, get more advisors along. Because to be fair, it was very good. I mean, I loved the whole, I mean, even the literature that you put out and the, the, the slides that they were presented, it was, it was well done. I mean, hats off. And I loved kind of the fact that you were like MC in the whole day. And so tell us a bit about the, the conference and what you're trying to do with it. Okay, thanks for those compliments. But we, we, what we deal with about six or 700 financial advisors across England, Wales and Northern Ireland. So the idea is to continually create this, this forum, if you like, once a year where they can come and they can, they can have me present some ideas that maybe they've not thought of, um, where they can come along and do perhaps, perhaps get some decent CPD, but also at the same time, 
uh, perhaps expand their thinking of why wills and the related products are so important to their business. So because we deal with both financial advisors and accountants now, um, there's an expansion of what they do very, very quickly as long as they understand how easy it is to take instructions from somebody for their yeah. wills and, and the related products. So I wanted to break that barrier down and have them come to a conference, meet salespeople, meet people with new ideas, and also meet people that uh, are in the same boat as them. What I quite liked about it is that you get a lot of advisors talking about the good old days of the LIA before it was, you know, before it was the PFS and all this, that and the other. And what I kind of liked about it, and it probably, it probably was because both you and David Batchelor were there. I think the, the two of you bring that, that MDRT, LIA sort of spin on the world, which I think is massively lacking in, in UK financial services in terms of, you know, um, conferences and such like. Is it, it was quite salesy, like not, not, we weren't being pitched at by no means, I don't mean that, but it was, it was very helpful, genuinely very helpful. Is that, was that intentional or was that just accident as to the speakers you got? Well, I suppose from experience, which is the usual thing that, you know, an older person can bring, um, is that you know what people roughly want before they even think they want it. Yeah, no. uh, but what you're doing is you're bringing different dynamics of things that after all the conferences I've been to, all the PFS and LIA conferences and MDRT stuff that I've either presented at or, or had stands at, I know the elements of what makes it the most valuable day. Yeah. So I put as much of that in as I can. You and our training right. programs, we bring the same sort of ethos to that as well. So, so when's, so your, when's your next one? You they, oh, uh, May the 16th this year. Um, we've already got nine speakers lined up, Ooh, so I've got, to trim one. <laughs> I've got to trim one or two of them. Um, Good luck. Good people saying, you know, please, can I speak? Um, and there's a variety of people. There's an, even a guy called um, uh, Ken Dench who's doing the uh, – he's written the book sales for dummies i don't know if you've come across no, no, that. I have, yeah i know which one but, you know all the dummies you know for dummies series. yeah yeah uh, he, he's written that he's written that book co-authored that book and he's coming to speak well, and he's really, i saw him i saw him at um i saw him at a recent conference and i think he was he was excellent so so tell me so so tell me where it is so it's in northampton which is where oh. our offices are based um it's on may the 16th it's on a monday and is it free for advisors to attend or do they have to be clients of yours well we don't mind who attends we do have a charge just to cover the cost of the yeah. day we're not money out of it it's no. more of a, let's just cover the cost yeah uh, we're only charging 67 pounds for the day it's not oh. it's not expensive. oh that is exactly yeah and the, the idea is to get as many people there as we can um and and have as many ideas share as we can but also give us a chance to show off a little bit and, and, and present us a little bit as well. Well, what I'll do, um, I mean, um, obviously we send out mailers and stuff to clients. We'll, we'll make sure that that goes in. When, when do bookings, when are bookings open from? Well, we're already booking. We took, uh, at the end of last year, we had, we had quite a few people that booked for next year already. Oh, yeah, good. Okay, we'll show. I, I mean, for the record, everyone that's listening, I, you know, I'm, I'm going to stick it in my diary and I'll, I'll definitely come along. I mean, I, I, go. It's, it's such a good day. And you do meet some of the, whilst they're quite, I'd say, traditional type advisors, there's, there's, there's something quite different about them that you wouldn't necessarily meet at the CISI conference. There's a different group of people. And I think you've, you've naturally attracted those. And that's good because they're, they're more of the from the old thinking, but with new ideas, and I like I like the dynamic very much. So, um, yeah, super. Okay, wicked. Um, so tell me about Nuffield Health. Okay, we um, we've been looking to expand in different ways. Um, now I'm actually a member of the Virgin Active uh, oh. Health. <laughs> I, I know, this was quite a difficult pitch, as you can imagine. On um, the record, so, I'm a member of Northfield Health, so there you go. Oh, there we are. Okay, well, I'm pretty sure I'm going to switch soon. So, um, so what we did was we looked at different ways that we would expand and, and make available, you know, the will drafting services. And we, we started to focus on bigger and bigger employers. And recently, we signed up with Nuffield Health, so all their employees now can refer straight to us to get their wills, their LPAs, or any other related products resolved. And we see that as the big growth element to the future. So there's the Family Building Society, King's Court Trust, Nuffield Health, and a handful of others. 
And what we're looking at doing is expanding in that, in that arena as well as accountants, because accountants have missed this trick for years. Financial advisors are pretty switched on yeah. and, and savvy to this. And the minute they understand it, they will do it. Yeah. But accountants have yet to have that penny drop. So um, from, our, from our point of view, that's the, they're the expansions of the, of the new arena. And Nuffield Health, the very point that they made to me was, how do people feel when they've made a will compared to what they were like before? So oh, you can... Oh, I, I can. T I mean, oh God, it's you just feel at ease. You're like you kind of know that you've got your sort of shit together. Like you're organised, and you know that if me and Martin decided to get in the car together and get, you know, the proverbial bus, you know, I know that. And the peace of mind that gives me knowing that Ruby would be taken care of. It's ma you, you can't even put it in words. To be fair, it's really stuff, isn't it? It's that old peace oh. of mind. And, and it was the big thing. Nuffield Health is a charity. I don't know if you know, but they they're based on trying to make try and promote good health and yeah. good well yeah well yeah and standards and stuff. Yeah. So their point was, if people feel better about doing it, let's let's offer it. Yeah, totally. We get exactly the same. But all the financial advisors say, as soon as our clients make a will, they'll go, "Oh, I'm so glad I've got that sorted out. Yeah. I'm so pleased that that's done. That's another weight off my mind." Yeah. The so words don't really, I mean, I, I'm, I'm with you and, you know, there's a lot of words like peace of mind and, you know, I feel happier, but you can't really put it into words. Like there isn't a word that describes the fact that I know that Ruby's now going to be safe and flipping loaded. I mean, quite frankly, if anything happens to me and Martin, I know she'll have lost her mum and dad, but she'll, you know, I've got this little pot that she can set up a business for and I mean, all the planning that went into it. So, I, you know, I think it's, I think it's, it's massively important. So, um, congratulations, though. That's a good job. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. It was a big, it was a bit of a coup for us because we had to go through a fairly lengthy pitch for it. I bet you did. And, uh, they don't just take on anyone. And we had some serious competition, too. So, so our experience, you know, the amount of, the amount of wills we drafted and who we deal with and how we care about what we do... Um, I think was that was the, the was some of the tipping points that they that people meet our ethos and that was that was a big thing for us so there was once a, there was once a quote that um you know I think I, I probably picked it up off Facebook or wherever I troll and um it was you know looks looks at look look actually doesn't exist it's just the reward for flipping endless years of hard work and I think you know every time I see you you've been pushing harder working harder you know you're always at conferences you know, you're always trying. I suppose, you know, that's why we've sort of stuck together as we've gone along both of our paths over the years. But, you know, stuff like that, it's, it's well-deserved. Like, you know, well done. Big deal, that. Luck favours the brave, I think. It does. Or the, nut, the nuts, I'd say. <laughs> Those that are craziest. <laughs> Forget most of them. Um, so tell me about the team. So, obviously, these are big projects. They can't. Go on. Sorry. I was going to say... They because that's what you've been doing as well, which is, um, you know, you've been constantly pushing the boundaries and you've been constantly looking for a way to do it naturally rather than forced. Yeah. Uh, but, and I, that's, that's one of the things I've learned from you is you've always been looking for the way to do it naturally, not trying, well, how do we sell this? How do we yeah, it? God. Yeah, but what is it that, that human beings actually want? They, well, they, no. they want it. It's yes, funny. It. Well, it's, it's funny because, you know, you get together with family and friends over Christmas and stuff. And, I, you know, I bet you get the same. And people say to me, so what is, it like, what is it that you do? And then you try and explain. And then I had a lady, she said, a friend, I didn't know her. She was actually, I, I, I met her, she was a friend of Mark's. And she said to me, you must be dead good at sales. And I, for the minute, I was like, actually, I don't, think, I don't think I'm good at sales at all. And she said, but you, you just talk and talk and talk and talk and talk and talk and talk. And talk. I was like, I do tend to like have draw breath, but it, I think I think the thing that's always struck me about you, which is the point, is it's that passion. We didn't set either of our businesses up to make tons of money. We did it because we we loved what we were doing, and that's what that's what your drive comes from. Yeah, I think from the core of me, it's about it's about leaving a legacy, or it's about making sure that people are in a better position. And actually, it goes back to that catalyst of that lady who I saw whose husband died. She had two children and uh, she just lost her husband. She was in her early 40s and I'm sitting in the solicitor's firm with her and the solicitors were just kind of like pushing me out. And, and it, was, it was awful how I felt she was treated. But there was a will. She had the right money that she needed. A mortgage was paid off and she had some dignity going forward. 
And yeah. for me, that, that was a really big issue. Um, so I wanted to make sure that I, I duplicated that. And that, that's the core passion of me. Yes, there's everyone quotes, you know, if you do what you really love doing, you're reasonably well for it anyway. So. I think um, I wrote, um, totally going off the subject, but I'll kind of related, but I, I got asked to write an article for, I think it was for IFA magazine. Um, it's going in the February or January edition. And um, it was kind of, you know, what's, what's the lessons of, of 2017? And I think it was actually David Batchelor that I heard say once, and he's probably taken it from somewhere else, as we all do take these quotes and bits. Um, and it was, you know, you need to dive when you can see the rocks. And I think anybody that's sitting there thinking, or oh, should I do this, or shouldn't I, or you've just got to flip and do it, and yeah, I mean, yeah, because yeah. life's yeah. short, and I and I suppose the business you're in, you see that more than anybody. Like, so you're you're always planning death every day, aren't you? Really, is what that's what you're doing. I suppose you could look at it that way, but what I like to think of it is is uh, pre being prepared for something that you. No will happen one day, you just don't know when. Yeah. So that's being prepared. But at the same time, doing it in a way that express how you feel about the people you love. Yeah. So, you know, you want Ruby to care about her and you want, to, want her to be financially dependent, independent. You want to be capable of understanding that you put some thought into that. Yeah. And that's what we do. We, 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 we get up so that people can pass it on in a, in a loving way. And I, and I think that's what's the most important. I know, um, I know we've spoken about my parents' will, and I, I actually don't actually know if they've ever got it sorted out, because, you know, they'll take advice from total strangers, but saying me saying to mum and dad, you really should sort yourself out, right? So, so I was chatting to my dad and saying, look, have you sorted your wills out yet? You know, have you got yourself sorted? He's like, oh, no, to do with you. You're not going to get any money. I'm, you know, if anything happens to me, your mum. It's all going to charity. And I was like, well, actually, I've got some money for going to you in my will. And he went, well, I'll have spent all mine before anything else happens to me and your mum. And I'm like, Dad? Dad? <laughs> so it's, it, it's an interesting conversation, isn't it, that anybody needs to have. But, you know, I think, I think it's fab what you're doing. I think it's good. So tell me, tell me about the team. So obviously projects like Nuffield are not, they're not insignificant numbers because have they got over 10,000 employees or something crazy? It's probably hundreds of I think there are about 16,000 employees in, uh, in the UK um, and they're continually growing. So, yeah. you know, the health, health club wise is one, one section, yeah. but also it's, of course, it's all about, um, you know, private operations and so on. Yeah. So there's hospitals that are involved. Yeah. In the that. yeah, yeah. So, so who have you got a company? Tell me about the team. Yeah. Okay. So we're not, we're not a massive company, um, but Tracy, my wife and I set this up, uh, back in 1995 yeah um trace step qualified um liz who works with us um who's one of our main drafters she's also now step qualified she just passed her step exam so we've got two really you know obviously high quality step qualified people in drafting um We've got Helen, who's my PA. I think you, I think you've met. Yeah, most. everyone needs a Helen. Christ, I've got a Helen. How do we function yeah. without Helens? Like, I know, I have no I, idea. I don't, I don't get it. They are you they are incredible. Every business person has a Helen. Simple, no no messing. <laughs> yeah, for, for me, it's a bit like having a car with no steering. <laughs> going all over the place, you know. And uh, so Helen keeps me on track. Um, we've got Max, who's working with us, who's uh, an apprentice. Right. Uh, recently Val as well and a handful of other people that are in the background so even my daughter works on in the business as oh, well. uh, and we've got we've got loads of other people that work with us on a on a, on a sort of a collaborative basis so we've yeah. got designers who work for us you know sometimes one or two days a week we've got we've got um stationary people we've got storage company yeah Brown. But as a poor company, we don't need too many people. So no, no, absolutely. Well, we're only seven, aren't we? So it's, you know, lean, lean and mean is what you are. Yeah. Well, so um, yeah. I have no idea, obviously, when this is going to be, um, which is going to go live or, you know, whichever month we decide to launch this. But what's your, uh, what are your New Year's resolutions? Tell me. Hey, yep. So definitely expanding in the employee benefit arena. Yeah. I think it's a big one. Um, definitely expanding in the uh, accountancy side. Yeah. Um, but most of all, what I want to do, and I think this is where you'll probably uh, appreciate it and I could probably do with your help on, is getting more um, 
social media savvy in terms of yeah. videos out there, animation of what we do, uh, but developing the training side. Yeah. So if a potential okay. buyer comes to us and they say, well, how can we use this within our business? There's a raft of things they can check out first um, and, and, and see who we are and what we do, but also bring all those benefits to, to their practice, whether it be a financial advisor or accountant. Yeah. Good. And what about and what about you personally? Get to the I'm a bit um, I'm a bit sort of um, excitement happy these days. I, oh, yeah. I, love I particularly it. love I particularly love scuba diving. So that's do you? Yeah, I didn't know that. The last year I was uh, diving in the Red Sea and oh, with sharks yeah. and whales. And stuff. Um, and I'll do that again this year. So that's a big passion for mine, scuba diving. Yeah, uh, I, I quite like riding a motorbike. I'm, I'm definitely into that. Um, and I, I work on, I work with strategic coach as well. So strategic coach, I'm, I'm, I'm one of their, I think you do strategic coach yeah, as well. Yeah, I do, yeah. Are you, in David's, are you in David's group? I think I you are. I am, um, although this month I can't make it. So I've got to kind of, I've got to squat in another group for a quarter. So David might, did, he might miss me. Well. I might get Peter, we'll see. <laughs> you, might, you might be sharing it with me. Oh yeah, maybe, maybe. I think I've picked one. I can't remember which one it is, but just because I'm, I've got other things that I'm doing that day. I'm speaking at a conference and stuff, so I've had to, I've had to gate crash another, which I don't like doing. Well, that's what I like. About what we do is we kind of bring coaching in our business yeah. to the financial advisors and the accountants. So that, that for me, really is one of my, one of my passions. I love the training side. I love the coaching side. So I attend coach in order to be a better coach, um, in order to help people as well. Yeah. So that's the other end, end of the extension of, of, let's say, what we're going to do, but also the things that I love doing. Yeah, good. And um, what's your, just because, you know, I know you're a big word swag kind of guy. What's your, uh, what's your favourite business quote? Or actually any quotes, like you see them flipping on timelines of Facebook and stuff. What's your favourite one? What resonates with you the most? Mm, that's a good one. There must be one. Yeah, I, th I, I of course have used the one begin with the end in mind already. Yeah. Uh, but uh, my favourite quote again is the Covey one, which is seek first to understand and yeah. then to be understood. Yeah. The reason it's so important is we can't do what we do as a yeah. business unless we understand what people want. Totally. I think that's my favourite, yeah. 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 Oh. Mine is, I, love uh, I, I like, um, I don't even know where it came from, but mine is um, don't die and unlive life. Okay. And, and actually, at MDRT one year, I can't remember which, which conference it was, there was, there was this big scary guy on stage and he said, um, children's children, and this was, I'd not long had Ruby and it was looking like that, <clears throat> you know, as I'm sitting in America, um, away from Ruby. And this guy said, um, children spell love, T-I-M-E. Yeah, that is true. Oh, God, this is bad. I hit you. He's like sobbing in the, st in the, in the audience. <laughs> you know what it's like. <laughs> well, no, I've, um, I've loved it I've loved chatting um, so just before we go I'm see, we'll put your contact details in the in the notes so how do people get hold of you what's the best are you on social media and stuff tell us a bit about that yeah so the, it's an easy version which is the will company is the is the name of the company so very imaginatively <laughs> named. So it's just it's just the will company.com so the will company.com is the quickest way to find us um, yeah. But yeah, the usual, the usual social media, Facebook and Twitter. And so on, so. All right. Oh, I've, I've loved it. It's way, 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 way overdue. And thank you for trying to get my parents to do their will. Um, who knows where their, their money will end up? Probably in charity. We'll see. Um, but thank you very much for doing mine and um, doing a cracking job. And I do need to review them because obviously things have changed and one thing and another. But um, thank you very much. And um, I hope you fulfill your New Year's resolutions whenever this is aired. All right. Cheers, Michelle. Thanks, Steve. Bye.